The Daily Beast has a huge story out today about how government officials have manipulated the intelligence on ISIS. They report, quote, senior intelligence officials of the U.S. military central command demanded significant alterations to analyst reports that question whether airstrikes against ISIS were damaging the group's finances and its ability to launch attacks. But reports that showed the group being weakened by the U.S.-led air campaign received comparatively little scrutiny. All right, so let's pause here for a second and just acknowledge that this is, in many ways, this is standard operating procedure. Whatever intelligence you have that backs your narrative, give that to all the different media outlets. Whatever you have that contradicts your narrative and your policy ideas, hide it. See, this is one of the main problems with government secrecy. This is why you need transparency in what's supposed to be a democracy. They continue, senior CENTCOM intelligence officials who reviewed the critical reports sent them back to the analysts and ordered them to write new versions that included more footnotes and details to support their assessments. According to two officials familiar with a complaint levied by more than 50 analysts about intelligence manipulation by CENTCOM higher-ups. So there's 50 intelligence officials who are like, yeah, they sent the report back to us and said, we don't like it. Change it. Change it to back our narrative. Say what we're doing is working. That's ridiculous. This is like propaganda 101. They say, in some cases, analysts were also urged, uh, urged to state that killing particular ISIS leaders and key officials would diminish the group and lead to its collapse. The intelligence pros said killing certain ISIS leaders might not diminish the group and that airstrikes might not be working. The bosses didn't like those answers. Not at all. So, you know what comes to mind when I read that? The same story we just did about the drug war about how U.S. policy for the longest time has been kill the leader and then everything else crumbles. But what actually happened when we kill the leaders? Mega cartels pop up in the place of the former cartels. People who are more vicious, more over the top, and kill more people pop up. And that's not just opinion, that is empirically what happened. We've covered the mega cartels many times now on the show. So that strategy, bottom line, doesn't work. And it also clearly does not work in the war on terror. That's what the intelligence analysts are telling us. But the idiots in Washington and the executive branch are like, yeah, we don't care. We're going to say that this works anyway, and we're just going to continue with this. So either they're stupid or there's ulterior motives. And I think it's probably a mix of both. Where they say, no, this has to be the right answer because this is what we're supposed to do. But then also, I think they probably, on some level, care about their donors, care about the military industrial complex, care about continuing to, you know, do airstrikes and sell more weapons to different people who we consider our allies in the region, and you name it. You got to keep the system going here. So this is a horrendous report. And also, might I add, that in Iraq and Syria, we've conducted 6,863 airstrikes. And we have no clue if they're working now. So I've even reported on previous things that came out of the administration where they said, yeah, you know, we killed at least 10,000 ISIS guys. Now, there were other reports that came later that said, well, those fighters have been replenished almost immediately. So you're just kind of treading water here and keeping the number about the same. But now with this new report, I have no idea what to believe anymore. I don't know if we're st we still have roughly about 30,000 ISIS members like we're told. I have no idea now if the Kurds are right when they've said it's actually north of like 200,000 people. I don't know what to believe anymore because it's clear that the people in Washington are just lying. They'll, they tell the intelligence officials, shut up with the stuff that disagrees with us and just go with our narrative. So I don't know what to believe, but here's what I know for sure. Our strategy is not working. Now, I get it. As I've said before, if the international community or other governments want to do specific airstrikes against ISIS, I get it. ISIS needs to be... Somebody needs to fight them. That needs to be done. But what we've demonstrated is that we suck at this, man. And this isn't just with ISIS in Iraq and Syria right now. This is with the previous Iraq war under George W. Bush. And with almost all the interventions we've done in the Middle East for the past decade. We're terribly incompetent where we kill the wrong people. We end up increasing recruitment for all these groups that we hate. And it's a giant clusterfuck. So, I'm not in the camp, if there is a camp, that says nobody should fight ISIS. Of course, somebody needs to fight them. They're, they're in absolute 
scourge. They're a monstrosity. They're barbaric. They're savage. They're disgusting. But I don't want to do it because they don't threaten the United States directly right now, and we're not good at doing it. So, you know, if you're on the side of continuing to do it, well, then you got the burden of proof is on you to show that we have a plan that could work. And even according to the people in Washington, they say, we know it's not working. That's why we're covering up the intelligence reports. And uh, how's this fact for incompetence? Quote, Army General Lloyd Austin came under withering bipartisan criticism on Wednesday when he testified before the Senate Armed Services Committee that after spending at least $43 million over a 10-month period, the U.S. had trained only nine fighters to confront ISIS in Syria. Oh, isn't that precious? <laughs> 43 million tax dollars down the fucking drain. We only trained nine fighters for $43 million. That's beyond absurd. And furthermore, why are we trying to get involved in a conflict where our government admits we don't like either side? We don't like Assad. We don't like who's backing Assad. We don't like that Assad is aligned with Iran and Russia. So we don't want to back him. But then again, we don't like the people who are fighting Assad because now it's jihadists. It's ISIS and al-Nusra. So two sides, we don't like either, but we're still trying to get involved and micromanage, even though... To even micromanage effectively, we still don't know what direction we would want to go in. So, it makes no sense for us to be involved, and this report and everything else we've learned about what's happening in the region proves that.